I got a feeling he could preach. He talks that fast testifying. I guarantee he'd deliver the mail. I like it. I like it. Preacher, I'm trying to quit. He's, he's, got, he's my kind of guy. I'm trying to quit. Just can't. Got the can't help it. Huh? I like it. First John chapter number 1. We've been reading verse number 1. The Bible says, That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, uh, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we've seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in the house of God again tonight. Thank you for this dear missionary family sending our way. Lord, we don't believe in accidents or chances. And Lord, uh, I, I certainly appreciate your providence. And I'm glad you're in control. And God, I'm glad, uh, Lord, that we can uh, help them a little bit along the way. I pray you'd use them in a great way. Get materials to folks on the front lines that, God, they'd be able to uh, 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 share the gospel with sinners that sinners could be saved. Uh, God, thank you for the works you've already done. Thank you for that letter you had that inmate send us. It could be a blessing to us in our service tonight. Thank you for the, those of our church that go and uh, our blessing to those behind bars. And thank you, Lord, for our mission church and bless their service tomorrow night. Uh, God, thank you, Lord, for uh, those that are faithful to work around the church and those that are faithful to give and those that are faithful, Lord, to, uh, to serve you. Lord, what a blessing to be able to go to church with folks that love God. Uh, now, Father, help us the next few minutes. Uh, encourage your people. I realize uh, many of them have worked hard this week. Week. Many of them have faced adversity. Many of them, Lord, uh, 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 have fought the flesh and the world and the devil. Uh, but Lord, they found themselves in the house of God tonight. Uh, I pray you'd lift their spirits. You'd encourage them. You'd edify them. Uh, God, you'd do something special for them. Uh, when they leave out of here, they'll have the zeal of God in their soul. Uh, God, I pray you'd give victory to somebody that's struggling tonight. Uh, help that one that's weak. Uh, and God, get glory to your glorious name. Use this unworthy victory. So we'll praise you and thank you for it. For it's in the holy and majestic and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. We find here uh, uh, the Apostle John uh, uh, inspired to pin down this letter. Uh, and we find some things uh, 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 that he reveals uh, in this text. Uh, uh, the first thing I want you to notice uh, is notice the witness. Uh, uh, look with me again at verse number 1. Uh, John says that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we've seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Uh, uh, John is speaking. Uh, he says that which was from the beginning. What's he talking about? Uh, he's talking about him who was in the beginning with God, uh, who was, was God. Uh, he's talking about the Lord Jesus. Uh, and he says uh, uh, that which was from the beginning uh, who was manifested before us. Uh, he goes on to say uh, we've heard, uh, uh, we've seen with our eyes, uh, we've looked upon him, uh, we've handled him with our hands. Uh, he's the word of life. Uh, and the life was manifested. We've seen it. Uh, and he said, I'm bearing witness uh, uh, to show you uh, uh, what great things uh, that I'm witness of. Uh, now, Brother Phil, uh, if you come and you tell me I want to write a book about revival, uh, I'm not probably going to read it because uh, you've never seen true revival. Uh, I don't read modern writers uh, who talk about the holiness of God uh, and who talk about revival. Uh, they've never experienced it. But I'm going to read revival uh, uh, from somebody who was at the Welsh revivals. Uh, uh, somebody who was uh, in America when God was a moving. Uh, somebody who had a witness account uh, who saw great things transpire. Uh, I want to read about somebody who was in the fire. Uh, who knows what it is. Uh, I'd experience the breath of God. Uh, hey, uh, uh, John didn't say I heard about Jesus. Uh, he didn't say somebody told me about Jesus. Uh, he said I saw him. Uh, I heard him with my own ears. Uh, I handled him myself. Uh, hey, I know all about him. I lay 
laid my head on his bosom. I, I walked with him for three and a half years. I, I was on the Mount of Transfiguration. I, I was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, and I, John, was the only one uh, who was at Calvary. Uh, and the things I've seen, I am a witness of. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, hey, uh, you can take stock uh, in what John said because he knew what he was talking about. Uh, we see the witness. Uh, not only notice the witness, uh, notice what was written. Uh, look what he said in verse number uh, uh, 3. That which we've seen... Uh, and have declare and declare uh, we unto you uh, that uh, ye also may have fellowship with us, uh, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and the things uh, and these things write we unto you uh, that your joy may be full. Uh, uh, John said, "I not only seen it, uh, but God told me to write it down uh, so you can see it by faith." Uh, I'm glad He wrote it down. Uh, again, we quoted earlier. So then faith coming by hearing uh, hearing by the word of God. Uh, we're begotten by the word of God. Uh, we're washed by the water of the word of God. Uh, hey, uh, our foundation is the word of God. Uh, it is the absolute the final authority uh, uh, for our lives. Uh, it's through the word of God we know that God framed the heavens uh, and spoke everything into existence. Uh, it's through the word of God uh, we realize we're lost without God. Uh, and it's through the word of God. Uh, hey, we got to under conviction uh, and we found out Jesus loved us uh, yeah. and would save us. Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks be unto God. God wrote it down uh, and it's forever settled in heaven. Uh, oh, yeah. Notice uh, the witness. Notice what was written. Now notice the walk. Now in verse number five. This then is the message which we've heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, uh, as he's in the light, uh, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, uh, cleanses us from all sin. Uh, notice John didn't say it's what we say, but he said it's not in our words, uh, but it's in our walk. Uh, you can tell me anything. Uh, I like what Brother James said. Uh, he said, I'll show you my faith by my works. Uh, hey, there has to be a walk uh, associated with the word. Uh, your walk uh, will prove uh, whether or not you got the goods. Uh, there are a lot of folks say they love Jesus. Uh, but they just have a real problem uh, ever getting out to the house of God. Uh, they got a real problem with preaching of the Bible. Uh, they got a real problem uh, oh, with some good godly singing uh, and some good godly things of the Bible. Uh, they don't have a walk to back up the talk. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, hey, uh, if you don't have a walk and you don't walk in the light, you cannot have fellowship with him. Uh, so we see the walk. Uh, and then notice, if you would, again, the word. Verse number 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us uh, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar uh, and his word uh, is not in us. The word says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, so therefore, if you say you have not sinned, the word's not in you and you're telling on yourself. Uh, we find the word. Uh, and I'm not going to preach on any of that. What I'd like to really look at is verse number four. He said, And these things write we unto you uh, that your joy may be full. Uh, again, these things write we unto you he said, Brother Doug, I thought you said John wrote this. Well, John said, these things write we yes. unto you. Yes. Well, who's the we? Uh, who's the one that told him what to write? Yes. The Holy Ghost. Yes. And John didn't write this. Man didn't write the Bible. The Bible's inspired. It's got breathed. Uh, Man was just the ink pen, the instrument that God picked up and pinned it down with. Uh, but the words came from God. Uh, the next time somebody told you, man, write the Bible, uh, take them 1 John chapter 1, verse number 4. Uh, say, John didn't write it. Uh, his name's associated to it. Uh, but the Holy Ghost wrote it through John. Uh, yeah, that's it. 
But he said, these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Did you ever watch people come into church? You don't see a whole lot of joy. Now I'm glad you make it. And I understand when you contend with the things of this world and with your flesh and with your job and with traffic and, and, and with the devil himself, sometimes it's all you can do to crawl to get back to the house of God. I understand that. But you know why folks don't flock to church? They don't see anything in us that would inspire them to have what we'd have. I want to preach with just a few minutes on this thought. Having your tank full of joy. Hey. <laughs> Having your tank full of joy. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about happiness. Yeah. That's a whole other uh, message. Right. I'm talking about joy. Yeah. Yeah. You see, your happiness is an emotion or a feeling. Yeah. Joy is a lifestyle. Yeah. Can I say you can have joy in the midst of your storms. Uh, you can have joy in the midst of your trials. Uh, you can have joy in the midst of adversity. Uh, you can have joy uh, regardless of your financial circumstances. Uh, regardless of your living circumstances. Uh, regardless of your health circumstances. Uh, you can still have joy unspeakable, full of glory. Uh, because joy comes from God. Uh, and it cannot be dissipated by the things of this world world, right, uh, but it can be sustained by God. Uh, yeah. So having your tank full of joy, and can I say to be full of joy, it takes a few things. No one will ever have joy unless they have these things incorporated in their heart and in their life. Can I say, first of all, it takes forgiveness. You cannot have joy if you're not right with God. If you're lost, you'll never know the joy of the Lord because you don't know God. But can I say, even if you're saved, if you're born again, if you're heaven bound, if your name's written down in heaven, hey, if Jesus went to prepare you a mansion on glory in Hallelujah Avenue, I'm telling you, that does not mean you'll have joy. Because if you've got sin in your life, you won't. No wonder, verse number 9, he gives us, and this was written to believers. He says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know why that verse is in there? Because he knew we was going to sin after we got saved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, hey, when you got sin in your life, you can't have joy. Right. Amen. Mm, it robs you of your joy. Yeah, we did. Mm, well, how do you know that? Did not David say in Psalms 51 after his great transgression, uh, did he not say unto the Lord when he repented, uh, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation? Uh, Hey, uh, salvation is of the Lord. He paid for it on Calvary. Uh, hey, it's all of Him. I'm saved in Him. Not in myself. Not in my works. Uh, not in my deeds. Uh, uh, salvation is of the Lord. And joy comes in that relationship of salvation. Uh, and sin blocks my joy when I have it in my life. Uh, listen, I said this this morning. Most people when they come to church not have wicked sin in their life. Right. And much to the dismay of popular rumors, it's Lisa is not drunk. <laughs> I don't know why I started calling her drunk one day. I did, it stuck. <laughs> she doesn't have a nip on her way into church, okay? That's a sunburn. That's why her nose is red. She's not a wife, okay? She's not a drunk. You knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most people who come to church aren't whoremongers. Right. Most people who come to church aren't murderers. Right. Most people who come to church aren't thieves of the surrounding God. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, they were right. Yeah. You're right. Amen. Most people when they come to church, for the Lord, they're, they're not they're not wicked. They're, they're not wicked. Why don't they have any joy? Isaiah told us what separates us from God is our sins and our iniquities. 
Sin is the transgression of the law. For a man to know to what to do right and do is not to him, it is sin. Amen. But iniquity is not sin. A lot of Baptist preachers want to lump them all together. Yeah. If it's the same, why did God call it by two different names? It's not the same. Iniquity is unequal dealing with God. Yeah. Anytime anything or anybody gets more of our teaching than the Lord Jesus, then we have iniquity. You see, the problem is uh, the world gets so much of our teaching. Uh, our jobs get so much of our teaching. Uh, our families get so much of our teaching. Our lifestyles get so much of teaching yeah. that God becomes an afterthought uh, and we have iniquity uh, and it uh, affects our joy. Uh, we're not joyful. Uh, I believe Matthew 6.33 is still in the book. Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness. All the other things uh, will be added unto you. We've got that backwards. Uh, we're seeking everything else. Uh, we want God's blessing on it. Uh, and as an afterthought, we come to the house of God uh, and we realize we haven't walked with the Lord like we should and we haven't meditated on the Lord like we should and we haven't been in the book like we should and we haven't been on our knees like we should and iniquity abounds in our lives yes. and joy's gone. Yeah. Huh? That's why we don't come in like Daffy Duck. Woohoo! 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 Yeah. All excited. Remember when you first got saved? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Remember that excitement? Yeah. Where's it at? Mm. No, Amen. Who's changed? God or you? Yeah. Mm. Amen. The book says he changes not. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. You can't have joy without forgiveness. It takes forgiveness to have joy. Can I say to repent? Doesn't mean just run to an altar and shed crocodile tears to tell God you're sorry. Yeah, you're right. Amen. That could be remorse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Repentance means you come clean with God and you turn yeah. from it. Hey, you go. turn towards God with the intent that you'll never do it again. Amen. Hmm. Acknowledgement is not repentance. Amen. Repentance is doing something back and turning from you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness Amen. affects your joy. It takes forgiveness. Not only does it take forgiveness, it takes being in fellowship. If you're going to have it joyful, if your tank's going to be full of joy, you've got to be in fellowship with God. Huh? Listen, fellowship and relationship are two different things. Look what it says in verse number 3. That which we've seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Who's he talking about? He's talking about it with him and the Lord. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Can I say you can be related to people and not have fellowship with people. You can be saved and on your way to heaven but be out of fellowship with God. You will not have joy if you're out of fellowship with the Lord. I want to tell you something. I don't know how it is at your house. But in our house, if I do something, I do something on a regular basis daily basis <laughs> that upsets mama and mama breaks fellowship with me it ain't a happy moment <laughs> 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 hey, <laughs> you know about that you got that t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm in fellowship with mama there ain't one you know what all hell can break loose around the fellowship okay. Amen. If you're not in fellowship, there won't be any joy. Right. Amen. Amen. Can I say, you don't have to be at odds with Jesus to be out of fellowship with him. That's right. You're right. Amen. 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 All you got to do is, this Brother Jordan, I still hadn't wrapped my mind around that message sometimes. <laughs> All you got to do is run the curiosity your way and not the way of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be out of fellowship. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll be out of fellowship. Yes, sir. And when you're out of fellowship, there is no joy. Let me ask Amen. you, Brother Gary, you've testified many times how you got out of church and you made it to let me back in church. When you was at church, did you have any joy? No. No. Did you have any joy? No. You were saying, you were in You just had fellowship. You got any joy now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm 
Amen. This takes fellowship to have joy. It takes forgiveness to have joy. Can I say this? In order to have your tank full of joy, it's going to take being in focus. Being in focus. Look with me in verse number five. He said, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The problem is, as human beings, we have this innate ability to be able to justify our situation. Huh? We can be out of the will of God but convince ourselves we're okay and everybody else has the problem. You're, right. You're, right. You're out of focus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Your attention is on you, yeah. not on the Word of God, yeah. not on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and any time you get your eyes off of Him and off His Word, guess what? You're going to try and figure out a way where you can still be right with Him and not have to get right with Him. Yeah. That's right. Right. Huh? It's like me trying to read without these. That ain't going to happen at all. Uh, matter of fact, I've got a new prescription. I've got to go get some new. Because reading with them now is getting to be a problem. <laughs> you'll find out you'll get old someday. Huh. No? I'm just trying to help you. When something's out of focus, you don't see it clearly. And when you're not in fellowship and you're not forgiven, you get out of focus. Amen. All of a sudden, everybody else has the problem. Hmm? All of a sudden, you're right with God and everybody else is wrong. All of a sudden, the preacher's lost his mind. And that's not what the Bible really means. And everything else, you'll justify to stay. If you haven't seen the new bulletin board, Miss Brittany and Miss Pam did, it's wonderful. You ought to go read it. It came as a, uh, a coalition of Brother Greg here preaching in revival a few weeks ago, something he'd said, and, and the message I preached last Wednesday night. And you go read that, it'll help you and encourage you. It'll help keep you in focus. Mm -hmm. See, when you're in focus, you see clearly. You know when you see clearly? When you're walking in the light. Amen. 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 But when you're walking in darkness, guess what? You're going to trip and fall. Mm -hmm. You're going to hit a stomp. Yeah. Uh, that's why they call it darkness. You know why bars are dark? Because they don't want you to see what's really going on in there. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. You know why the devil wants to keep people in darkness? So they don't really see what's going on. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. Can I say men's deeds, they love darkness rather than light. That's it. And your fleshly nature does this very same thing. Mm -hmm. And it'll cause you to get out of focus. To be full of joy, you've got to be in focus. You've got to see things in the right light. You know what it takes to have a tank full of joy? It takes a fire. It takes a zeal for God. Yes, sir. It takes Amen. getting a can't help us. I can't wait to get back to church. I can't wait. To, I hadn't got over what the Lord did for Sunday. Eight yeah. people joined the church and God Amen. moved in and, and, and God just blessed. And, and I mean, and really, if you look at it for the last month or so, God's just been giving us fresh oil, been blessing, Amen. been speaking of hearts. Uh, folks have been getting help. Uh, folks have been getting encouragement. Uh, I'm getting texts. I'm getting phone calls. Preacher, uh, I'm excited about what God's doing. I'm looking forward to what He's doing. Hey, what's that called? That's called a fire, uh, a zeal. Uh, that's called, hey, uh, I want some more. Uh, uh, load me up, Lord. Uh, hey, uh, when you can't get enough, you're in a good place. Uh, hey, uh, it'll fill you up. Uh, hey, it'll start bubbling over. Uh, running in your saucer. Uh, running out of your saucer. Uh, it gets gooder and gooder. Uh, there's nothing like a fire sent from heaven. Uh, that'll bless your soul. Uh, That'll fill you up. Uh, you can always tell when people are on fire, and you can tell when people are burnt out. Mm. When they're on fire, they get a joy. When they're burnt out, they just drag around. Huh? Let me say this mm, to be full of joy, it takes a few things it takes forgiveness, it takes fellowship, it takes focus, it takes fire. It also takes the fruit of the Spirit being developed in us. Galatians 5, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. I want to tell you, you get the right kind of love, you'll get full joy. Yes, sir. Love is that I love somebody because they love me. Love is that I love the people who come to our church. Love is you love everybody where they're at. Amen, Pastor. You know why? Because Jesus loves them where they're at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Huh? You get the right kind of love. You get the love that God has. You start loving people where they're at. Uh, 
You start loving a crowd that doesn't look like you, doesn't smell like you, doesn't act like you, but you love them anyway. Come on. Amen. It'll start welling up some joy in you, huh? Yeah. Not only love, uh, but joy. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. And all these things point to you letting the Spirit of God have control in your life, and guess what happens? Joy shows up, huh? Not only that, peace, huh? There's a peace that passes understanding. Uh, you know what to give you joy in the midst of your storms? Uh, uh, knowing that you have a peace uh, that has calmed your soul. Uh, hey, peace uh, uh, in the midst of tra uh, travesty and tragedy and all the problems that come your way. Realizing this is as close to hell as you're ever going to get. Uh, everything's all right in glory. Uh, and soon and very soon you get to go. Uh, uh, That's good. Not only that, but long-suffering. Long suffering is a fruit of the Spirit. It'll cause you to have some joy. The Lord's been working on me. I said this this morning with this long suffering thing. You know I'm the least most patient person in the world. Do not pray for me to have patience. I'll kill you. <laughs> I don't want the tribulation that work with patience. I don't want all that. Huh? I don't know what's going on. Deal with me. Because what I've learned is God is in control. Amen. Amen. If I'm in the left lane wanting to do 80, which is a rare, you know, not a rare occasion, and Grandpa's in the left lane doing 40 with his turn signal on and never turns, <laughs> I've learned to go slow me down for a reason. Yeah. There might be Mr. State Trooper up the road. Even worse than that, there might be a, 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 a wreck about to happen up the road, and God's just protecting me. He's watching over me. Yeah. I'm learning these lessons. Come on. Lessons to learn, but I've been learning them. Yeah. Huh? I, I don't know what it is. Pleasant Valley Road, 11,000 cars a day go up there. So I don't know why every Sunday morning I get caught behind either a farmer <laughs> or somebody from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> somebody in Kentucky and they don't know where to turn so they stop at every street and see if that's the street that they're in front of me and they're i got to be here at 9.30 to pray and they're all the time right in front of me and slow, slowing down. I don't understand it all. But the Spirit of God just gives you some long suffering. Mm -hmm. And when you got long suffering, you find joy. You know what I found? I've got a great CD. Hey. I just put that thing in, yes, listen to some of them songs on there, and that just uplifts my spirit. Yes, you know, I'm sitting in the parking lot driving 80. Amen. No, yes. Yes. I picked up, I was down at Brother Rocky's here not long ago, and he gave me a bunch of CDs. I put this one guy in there and made me mad. I'm listening to him. I think that CD brings comfort. That <laughs> yeah, was a knucklehead. I don't know what he was preaching, but it wasn't the Bible. <laughs> he was preaching the book of outer space or something. I don't know. But I'm glad that God can give us long suffering. It's a fruit of the Spirit, huh? Amen. Gentleness, huh? Learn to be gracious towards people, huh? Yeah. Goodness. Amen. Having a good nature and wanting to do good to people and wanting to help people, huh? Faith, huh? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. All these things, uh, the fruit of the Spirit develops in you, and you know what it all does? It's building joy, huh? Yeah. And meekness and temperance against such there is no. Uh, thank God for the fruit of the Spirit. It takes that for you to have joy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you're going to be a hothead, and you're never going to you amount to nothing, and you're going to just run around half-cocked all the time, and you're never going to have any joy. Amen. And not only that, nobody's going to want to be around you. Right. Yeah. Let me say this. How are you going to have your tank full? You know what give you some joy? Just taking a look into the future. Right. Yeah. You're right. Amen. We're going home, Bill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. How come you don't sing that no more? Because you haven't looked into the future. Mm -hmm. hmm? Amen. Oh, 
Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. A day I shall never yeah. forget. Huh? I mean, I you I sing know. them old hymns because you got joy. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You know what some of you sing? That old hee haw song. Yeah. Bloom, despair, yeah. have me on me. Yeah. You've lost your joy. Yeah. Your problem is you're looking in the past. Yeah. There ain't nothing good back there to look at except the day you got saved. Huh? You need to look ahead. Paul's like pressing toward the world. Go to high call of crazy. They're forgetting those things which are behind. Uh, all that's going to do is drag you down. Uh, hey, look ahead. That'll pull you up. Uh, that'll lift you up. Uh, hey, that'll get you all the way headed to the right direction. Uh, Amen. Have a look to the future. Huh? That'll help you. Let me ask you this. How's your joy? Huh? You see, when you go to the service station, you got to get out. You got to pay at the pump. You got to put the nozzle in the, in the gas tank and you got to fill up. Yeah. Well, you come tonight, won't you get filled up? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Be not drunk with wine wearing his excess, Miss Lisa, <laughs> but rather. Be filled with the Spirit. Amen. You get full of joy. Huh? There was an old guy. He sang the Southern Gospel with Henson family, wrote a bunch of songs. He's famous for the lighthouse. Everybody knows 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 He's famous for that song. He wrote another song. It's not as famous for it. It's called We Need a Soul Filling Station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we ought to do when we come to the house of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ought to come and get so full of God. Yeah. And then when we go out of these doors, we're to empty ourselves on this world. Yeah. We're to pour out the goodness of God on this yes. world so that when yeah. we come in empty, we can get filled up again. Yeah. The problem is if you never empty it out, it's like the manna in the wilderness. It gets stagnant. It doesn't do you any good. You've got to get rid of all of it. It's yeah. like keeping fuel in your lawnmower over the winter. In the spring, it won't start. It's got all corroded. Some of you got your arteries, spiritual arteries, called up. You need to let God cleanse you and then get full of Him. Go out and get empty. Come back in, let Him fill you. Go out and get empty. Come back in, let Him fill you. You'll start seeing folks want what you got. Hungry and thirsty for what you have. And you'll have joy unspeakable, full of glory. I've seen the goodness and blessing. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you, how's your joy? <clears throat> Why don't you get something done about it? Because life's too short to be miserable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I'm telling you, eternal life's going to be great. Yeah. If you go in not limping into heaven, but go in joyfully yeah. and looking forward to what God That's has right. in store. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Yeah.